Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome all viewers. Today we have with us once again our dear brother, Muhammad James Sutton. We are going to be talking about his brand new book to help us get ready for Ramadan, The Believer's Handbook for Ramadan. Jazakallah khair, akhi. Thank you so much for joining us. Barakallah fikum wa iya. So before we delve into this book, um, you can purchase it from Amazon. Check the links in the description. It's very well designed, very well written, very beneficial. But the first thing we want to do is we want to mention and make dua for our brother Ismail. He just recently died. He was uh, 18 years old. Rahimahullah. May Allah grant him genital for those and re reunite him with his family in genital for those. I mean, and this actually, it ties into this book because in the very beginning of your book, you have acknowledgments, and this was, you know, this was before this uh, this accident happened. And you mentioned Brother Ismail's father. You said uh, as you were, you know, thanking people who had an impact on you in your life leading up to this book. You wrote next, our brother is Hawk, who taught me to love the Hadith of the Messenger of Allah. His Hawk, by the permission of Allah, was the first influence that I had that sent me on the path of seeking knowledge. May Allah grant is Hawk the best of both worlds. May Allah bless is Hawk and his family. So, you know, subhanAllah, this uh, really just it hit close to home. And I just wanted to give uh, you a moment to, you know, pay your respects and say what you'd like to say, inshallah. I mean, if you focus on the acknowledgments, if you notice, I put the acknowledgments first for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then right after that, I was thinking uh, the brother Marty, who died a couple years back, and his hop, you know, like you just mentioned, his son, may Allah have mercy on him. And then entering them to Jannah, I put the acknowledgement and thanks for these two brothers before I put the thanks for my own mother. Because me coming into Islam is more important than me coming into this world. So, I mean, me coming into this world and living as not as a non-Muslim, so it brings no benefit to me and it brings no benefit to anybody. But those brothers being the, the influence that they were to for me coming into Islam, so alhamdulillah, you know, they deserved to be thanked even before my own mother because the impact that that brother had is hawk as far as making me love the hadith you know it's just, uh, it can't be spoken in words and that's the least that I can do for him so I just uh, I ask everybody to please make dua for him his family and his son you know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his son and enters him enters him into Jannah you know and his hawk is a very good brother and this is a very difficult time for him and his family so may Allah make uh, make it easy for them. Amen. Amen. Allah make it easy for them. Yeah, you know, I had the pleasure of knowing Ismail to an extent and a really good, really good kid, really good brother. He was so young. One very important reminder to take uh, from this and, and upon opening uh, this discussion is letting us uh, remember that Ramadan isn't promised. I mean, inshallah, Ramadan is about a little over a week away, but we're, we're not promised to make it to Ramadan, you know, and we should... um take heed and really uh, take advantage and be appreciative of the, this opportunity if we are given that opportunity to to live during Ramadan and to fast during Ramadan. Yeah, and that's what we talked about before anyways. Uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu he never used to do anything in Ramadan that he did not do outside of Ramadan. You know, he just stepped it up a lot. You know, so, I mean, we shouldn't just live our lives in preparation for Ramadan. We should be living our lives in preparation for our deaths, you know, because if you could, you know, just imagine like right now you closing your eyes and really, really imagining your death. And then just and then open your eyes and think like, OK, at that time, what's the most important thing to you is collecting money. The most important thing to you is, uh, you know, working and getting a better job and, you know, uh, getting on social media and going back and forth with these clowns is. Are these is this is this important to you or is preparing for that next life? You know, seeking knowledge, uh, practicing that knowledge, and teaching the people that knowledge. And this is how we should live our lives. And if we die upon that, inshallah, you know, we hope, we hope that you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive our sins and enter us into Jannah. I mean, we have to prepare ourselves and we have to prepare the people around us. Brother. This world is not. I mean, everybody's fighting over this world, you know, and. Who's going to have control of this world? But this world is all going to go back to Allah. All of this is, it all belongs to Allah. It doesn't belong to us. But why, why are we concerned about it? The thing that, that we can focus on is, uh, you know, our next life. 
you know, the one thing that stays with us in our graves, not the two things that leave us. And when we get buried, you know, but that's the thing, the people, they put so much focus on their wealth and their families, the two things that leave you. They forget that one thing that stays with you. So, I mean, alhamdulillah, this book now, because we're getting close to Ramadan, it's a preparation for Ramadan, okay? But like you said, we might not make it to Ramadan. And if we do make it to Ramadan and we make it to the end of Ramadan, but it's still got the reality of death. And then this is something that we have to prepare for day in and day out. So, you know, alhamdulillah, you know. Yeah, yeah, jazakallah khair. And well, let's talk a little bit about this book because it's very important to prepare for Ramadan. Uh, I think that's something that we neglect a lot. One thing that you've expressed in a, a recent video that you did that was very beautiful about the um, about Ramadan in Damaj, Yemen. I mean, you just explained how an environment like that, how the people approached that month and what they focused on and how hard they strived and how hard they worked. And it's like, you know, that gives us um, an example to, to, to strive for, to try to emulate. And uh, it's important that we have resources like this book that lets us know um, what to expect for Ramadan, um, you know, what to do during Ramadan. Well, I hope that the the people, they, they, you know, they got more out of that video about Damaj and the stories about the chicken, you know, <laughs> you know, you know I, I looked in the comment section and I saw everybody was concentrating on the chicken. But a long time. <laughs> so, yeah, many, that. many funny, many funny moments in that in that, you know, quotables, mashallah. It's over an hour long. So if you haven't seen that video, please go go check that out, inshallah. Well, I mean, uh, th this is the purpose of the book, because the thing is, is that you see like a lot of people like uh Let's say, like in the West, right? Because uh, a lot of the people that write these types of books to prepare people for Ramadan, like these types of like Ramadan reflection type books, they're more like just like emotional thoughts. And they're not really showing and guiding the people how to go about fast, not just fasting, but all the things, all the actions that we have to do throughout Ramadan, the, the fasting, the recitation of the Quran, the standing up at night of prayer. You know, uh, of course, we got Layla to Qadr, so we've got the last 10 nights of Ramadan. How to start your fast, how to break your fast, your intentions for having for fasting, citing the new moon for the entering of Ramadan, citing the new moon for the entering of Shawwal and the ending of Ramadan, the, the aid prayer. And of course, you know, the six days of Shawwal, which I added into the book, even though that's after the aid, but it's still because it's connected and it's a type of worship that we do. So I still added that into the, the chapter on aid, you know, just be, to, to encourage the people to fast those six days of Shawwal. So the thing is that a lot of the people are not showing the people through their books how to go about all these acts of worship. And then, and then the people that do do that, they're like more, you know, just kind of just showing, the, like telling the people, taking the hadith and taking the, the ahkam and the, you know, they, they, they have from the hadith and kind of like writing it out like a like a story type thing. But I want I want the people to look at the hadith and see the hadith. And 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 then go about these actions in Ramadan the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did them. So, you know, when they do this, it's, they're not doing this because this is their madhab, or they're not doing this because this is what the father told them, or they're not doing this because this is what their school teacher told them, but they're doing this because they see that this is the hadith of the messenger, and this is the way that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did these actions, and we should do them in accordance with the sunnah. So that's why I put the book together like that, because it's something that, you know, a lot of the students from Damaj, they, they made books like this, you know, like uh, throughout the years, different books pertaining to the, you know, the, the rules and regulations, for fasting, but we don't, you know, and instead of taking like one of those books and just translating it for the people, which is what uh, has become the, the custom of the people, I said, no, because the thing is, is that we need a book that's, that's written for us, directed towards us, because that's what students of knowledge should be doing. Students of knowledge should not be spending their time translating books, but we need to focus on the, the information and the, you know, the religion that the people in our countries need, and we need to give that information to the people in a way that they'll understand it. You know, but not going out of the Quran and the Sunnah, sticking with the Quran and the Sunnah, but giving it to the people and dealing with the issues that we have to deal with in the West. Because we have to deal with issues here. We don't have to deal with in Saudi Arabia or deal with in Yemen. And there's questions that we get here that, you know, the ulama over in those countries won't be asked, you know, or, you know, so the, the thing is that we have to, like, make books for the people here, you know, in the West. So they can go about fasting and, of course, into following those guidelines of the Quran and the Sunnah. And doing things correctly and you know and then saying okay why are you doing this because this is a hadith of the prophet not because my father told me this is the way or my teacher showed me how to do this or whatever the case may be or the imam in the message 
what you told me. So, you know, th this was the whole purpose of the book. So I was just going to say, Allah Mubarak, I think you really accomplished that goal. I mean, in terms of uh, the way that this book was written, it seems like it's, it's specifically catered towards the uh, Western English speaking uh, audience. And I would say that this should this should be taught in Islamic schools. I would say when Shaban starts coming in, or maybe even a little bit before then, depending on how long it would take them to go through this book, I think um, all the Muslims, especially the Islamic school students, should study a book like this. And I think it would really uh, change their perspective regarding Ramadan and their whole perspective of Ramadan when they go into it and how they benefit from it. And, you know, we can also go into, um, we can take a look at the contents, inshallah, if you want. Um, and maybe if there's anything that you wanted to, you know, specifically uh, talk about, but I think it'd be good to give the people an idea about specifically what it is that you deal with in this book, inshallah. I wanted to keep everything very chronological, right? So, and of course, before we go into something like, you know, like the first chapter, as you see, the benefits and rewards of fasting, because that's like more the the motivational stuff. Like when you read that, you like, you know, you get hyped up about it. And then, of course, because the ahkam, when we're dealing with the rulings of, rules and regulations it's uh you know it you know you take you from that that motivational high to that you know it, it's I mean, i'm not saying it's 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 uh, beautiful it's good to know but obviously when you when you're reading the motivational the hadith about the reward for fasting of course that makes the people want to do it so what i tried to do in the book is uh you know in the in the beginning in the middle and the end i put the three most important chapters that you know that should motivate the people so as, as you're reading through all this ahkam, you get the, all right, first off, you get the, the beginning, of the, all right, the benefits and rewards of fasting, which is going to, you know, brings the motivation in from the from the Quran and the Sunnah about fasting and the benefits of fasting. So it gives you that motivation. Then we go into, like, the history of fasting, uh, the, these issues pertaining to fasting, like, you know, what causes, uh, you know, like, like it says here, uh, uh, the people had the issues about, like, Sha'ban, we fast, uh, you know, the hadith of Abi Huraira about the stopping of the fasting of uh, halfway through Sha'ban. So I dealt with that issue and I dealt with other issues. Dealt with the issues of the sighting of the moon, you know, and you see like the intention. So this is all like more like rulings and things like that, right? And it keeps going like that until we get to the chapter on the standing at night in prayer, you know, so, uh, which is going to be right after this chapter. Yeah, right here. Issues pertaining to the night prayer, which now brings you back to being motivational again. Because this way it gets the person hyped up to stand up. and You know, because, you know, the fasting itself during the day is, 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 uh, is, shuk, is one of the most beneficial things. But we also, we have two chances a night to get our sins forgiven. And that's the first off standing every single night in prayer. At the hadith of Abi Huraira to Radir Anhu, when he said, Kala uh, Kala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ramadan, amen, and so whoever stands up in a, a nice Ramadan with iman, that means that he's seeking the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, for his actions and doing it with ikhlas, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of his sins. Now, of course, it's the small sins, not the major sins, major, major sins you have to repent from. But those sins will be for, forgiven just from standing up. And then we also have the last ten nights of we also the hadith is in Abi Huraira and both of these uh, hadiths are muttafaqun ali you know so these are the night is so much there's so much blessings in the, in the nights of Ramadan and the last 10 nights of Ramadan are the best 10 nights on the on the face of this earth so the the whole the, the you know I try to put in a lot of effort into the the night prayer the last 10 nights, like those two chapters to really motivate the people to to get up and do these actions the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did them. Because unfortunately, the people nowadays are not, you know, they've gone they've gone away from the sunnah in regards to the night prayer. You know, uh, the majority of the people throughout the year, they don't pray at all at night, not even witzer. And then on top of that, when they do go into Ramadan, they're praying 23 rakahs, which I dealt with that issue also in the book. So I'm not going to go into it here. You know, you can read it. Issues uh, dealt with uh, in the book, you know, about the whole how many, uh, how many rakaat the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pray at night inside Ramadan, outside of Ramadan, and what's the as far as the narrations about the twenty rakaat is it is it authentic? Is it not authentic? So all that's dealt with in the book. So it's the, the whole thing is all of these actions just call them back to, you know, the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did things, and of course, as you see, zakat al-fitr, 
And then you see, like, all of this is, like, just dealing, a lot of it's dealing with the ahkam. But it's all, like I said, with every single issue, we go over all the most important issues, bring the hadith. And then at the very end of the book, which is chapter 14, yeah, I tried to put that chapter in, you know, as, again, to motivate the person before they leave. So this is uh, reading the Quran during Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. So the people that follow me on YouTube, uh, on my page, they know that I put up a community post. It was a statement from Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Where he's talking about the the descriptions of the people of the Quran, and uh, a lot of the people they uh, there's a big reaction on that post uh, because uh, you know what he said. I mean, it's a very very beautiful statement, and they didn't know that that was actually copy pasted out of the book. But you know, I guess now you guys know, inshallah. But uh, is this reading? It should be like maybe the third page down because at first I brought like a this a hadith, and then uh, it's like maybe the. Let me see, right there. Yeah, right here there. it is. Yeah. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an said, The person that memorizes the Quran should be known by his nights while the people are sleeping. He should be known by his days while the people are not fasting. He should be known by his sadness while the people are full of joy. He should be known by his crying while the people are laughing. He should be known by his silence while the people are trying to talk over each other. He should be known by his submissiveness to Allah while the people are behaving in an arrogant manner. The person who has memorized the Quran should be crying, stricken with grief over his past sins, forgiving in times of anger, wise and extremely quiet. The person who memorized the Quran should not be rough in his manners, heedless, argumentative, loud when he talks and quick to become angry. And you see that statement and you see like the majority of the people are the, the or what they shouldn't be is what they are. Or what they are is what they should be. You know, so and then this is the majority of us. And so if you look at throughout, even uh, like a lot of the people that are on YouTube calling to Islam, I mean, look at the characteristics. And this is this is this is how we judge people. We don't judge people by the following that they have on social media. We don't judge people by their their ability to entertain the masses. I mean, because if that's the case, then you know, on a lot like all these entertainers, why we should be watching them? Why are we watching Muslims entertain us? We should. You know, again, it goes back to that previous thing. First, right now we're preparing for Ramadan, but every second of our lives, you know, you know, we're preparing for our deaths, you know. And even Imam Shafi mentioned that in a poem I did. I, I explained this poem on my YouTube channel before, you know, if people find the video. It's uh, uh, one, one uh, I think it's like one night in the grave. I think uh, one night in the grave will make you forget your wedding night. Hmm. And Imam Shafi said that. He said, you know, we're the, we're the people that, you know, you, if, how can you act arrogant? And you're like a you're a person whose 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 life is counted by the number of breaths that you take. You know, so we should strive and we look at these characteristics. First off, we should be focused on ourselves and try to take on these characteristics for ourselves, because he's telling you this is a Sahabi. It's Abdullah bin Masoud. You know, is one of the the top uh, the Sahaba, the top Sahaba of Tafsir. You know, and just him, period of knowledge. You know, he's one of the most knowledgeable Sahaba. So, you know, and here he is giving you this description of the people of the Quran. So us, we should take on that that type of those types of characteristics. And when we're dealing with other people that are calling to Islam, we should look at them and see, like, how many of these characteristics, uh, characteristics do they possess? And then this is your criteria to judge whether or not you should listen to the person. You know, because uh, the, like you said, we, we, we talked about this before, that the majority of the people right now are not calling the people, you know, to Hey, you know, Ramadan's coming up. It's time to prepare for Ramadan. It's time to get ready. You know, it's time, you know, because the thing, you know, it's just like uh, if you were going into any, anything, anything that's important, you have a major exam, you have a, a big game in a tournament. Wouldn't you be preparing for it? Wouldn't you be training for it every single day, you know, studying for that exam that you had? If you had to go and take your SATs or whatever it is, how many hours a day would you be putting in way before the exam, months before the exam, you'd be preparing to go and take these SATs, right? If you had a big tournament coming up that you were about to, you know, state championships or something like this, would you, you know, you're going to be sitting at home eating pizza and ice cream, watching like watching, uh, you know, TV and, you know, the Dawa shows that are on YouTube or what? What are you going to be doing? You're going to be preparing for those types of things, right? You know, you're not going to be sitting around. You'd be out on the field training and, you know, sweating, sweating in the heat and everything, getting ready for that tournament or getting ready for that exam or, you know, or whatever it is that you're getting ready for. But now when it comes to the deen, when it comes to this, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now, you know what I'm saying? It's like now it's like, oh, you know, it's OK. 
we'll get ready tomorrow. This is why we're in the situation that we're in, you know. And we're like, if we look at the situation and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah we're not going to change. Our state is not going to change until we start to change this mindset. And as long as we continue to live with this mindset of like, you know, lackadaisical attitude with worship, uh, Ramadan's come, it's still two weeks away. It's still two weeks away. That's why we're losing. That's why we're in the situation we're in. But now, of course, that's not what the people are calling to on the Internet. Instead of calling the people to get ready for Ramadan, get ready for this great month of worship, you see what they're doing. Liberals this and feminists this and all this type of stuff and just distracting the Muslims. Well, like some of these people, they distract the Muslims more than Iblis. They distract the Muslims more than Iblis. Iblis is on vacation while these guys are distracting the Muslims. Iblis is chilling. Bahamas. He's, you know, Bermuda Triangle, wherever he's at. You know, he's just chilling. He can take a vacation. In fact, I think sometimes that Shaitan is sitting there with a notebook taking notes from these guys on how to distract the Muslims. So look at the people that you're listening to. This is the most important month of your life, you know, out of all this year. Get prepared for it, you know. Don't take this lightly, you know. Just, just imagine. Go back and look at yourself and how you prepared for all those other things in your life. And then look, because you took them seriously. So the fact that you're not preparing for this, it means what? It means that you're not taking it seriously. You know, the same thing. If you can sit there and go one month out of the year, and you haven't picked up the mushaf like your mushaf is collecting dust on the on on a bookshelf. This and, and you say, "Oh, I love Allah." You do. You love Allah, mashallah. You love Allah so much that you you let His words sit on the on the on the on the desk collecting dust, and it becomes an ornament or something on on a you know somewhere in your house. You know where you just like it, you know it's just just sitting there collecting dust. It's for people to see, but you love Allah. You know, if you love Allah, will lie. His word will be the most important word, and that and that word will keep you busy day and night, keeping you busy reflecting on what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying in this Quran, reflecting on the things that you need to be doing, and then going back to the Sunnah of His Messenger because you know that the guidance, the the explanation of the Quran is from the Quran with the Quran, and then the Quran with the Sunnah. So we go back to the Sunnah because we can't understand the Quran without the Sunnah. You know, and this is how we spend our days, and this is how we should spend our days. You know, and this is all preparation. It's not just preparation for Ramadan. It's preparation, like, just as, you know, like, imagine, like, we're standing at night at prayer and how tiring that is. Like, we talked about, okay, the Salat and the match, right? You know, and, uh, you know, brothers used to, you know, the Sheikh used to pray eight Jews, eight, eight, eight Jews in the night on, on the 27th. They would pray from the, right after Salat, to, uh, right after the, the class in Sahih Muslim, all the way to Fajr. And you're going to you complain if you did this in the masjid now, you complain, you say, oh, my God, how are we standing up like this? Oh, oh, oh. you're not going to stand up like that on the day of judgment or you think you're not going to feel it on the day of judgment. Mm. So you can't, you know, I would rather stand up for a couple hours in this life and relax on that day. But you guys, you want to relax now. You stand up when a day is when each day is equal to a thousand years. You think you're going to be enjoying it on that day. So Allah must die. You know, the, we got to wake up. man. We got to wake up man. we got to stop listening to these people that are not calling the people to what the what what is really important. We need to focus on our religion. You know, that's our, our our religion is our religion. This is the truth. Let the people follow behind us. We're not following the people. We're not going to follow these people and we're not going to follow their standards and we're not going to follow anything that they set for us. We're going to set the standards. We follow the Quran and the Sunnah. And the standards should be set by us. Standards of, standards of morality in the Quran and the Sunnah. I'm not going to spend my days and nights like, you know, both of us. We're not going to sit here going back with feminists and liberals and all this, talking about how evil they are and how misguided they are, because we know how misguided they are. But the problem is, is now we need to teach the Muslims aren't why we're keeping them busy with all this type of foolishness. We're not focusing on teaching them what they need to know to be guided, to have the correct moral standing. To, to be, you know, to have the, you know, the correct beliefs in Allah. I, SubhanAllah, can you believe, like, how many months ago was it when we had the issue going back and forth uh, with the videos about the meaning of La ilaha illallah? How many months ago was that? Oh, okay. no, no. Can you believe that we had to make videos explaining to Muslims what La ilaha illallah meant? You know, I mean, just imagine that, you know. So mm. these are the important things that we need to focus on. We need to focus on preparing the people. 
Because preparing them for Ramadan is a step. Preparing them for the day of judgment, that's the most important thing. Standing in the night of Ramadan, like I said, just feel the pain. Go through the pain and go through the suffering. It's better to do it in this life than do it uh, than to do it in the next life. You know, so this is something that we need to focus on. This is something that we need to prepare for. And this is something that we also need to continue to motivate people to be in preparation for. You know, not all this other stuff. This other stuff just it's just distractions. Along with that. Well, you know, one beautiful thing about Ramadan is that even if the most half is gathering dust in other parts of the year, I mean so many Muslims, alhamdulillah, they come back to Allah. They come back to the masjid, they start praying and fasting. As a result, their iman increases, their taqwa increases. So, alhamdulillah, this is an opportunity. May Allah forgive all of us. May Allah guide us. And I definitely recommend starting, you know, the month strong with this book, inshallah. You still have some time to order this book and to read it and to prepare yourself before Ramadan comes. I would also recommend, you know, maybe getting um, a copy or two as a gift for some other people, because other people, they also would definitely benefit from this book. Inshallah, it's, it's written very easy to understand. It covers the most important topics. It brings forth ayat and hadith to, you know, as proofs and evidences, because that's where we get our religion from. So please check the links in the description and uh, make sure you order a copy of this book, Inshallah. And also, if you're looking for some, some more motivation and some more uh, ways to prepare for Ramadan and how to approach Ramadan, also check out Muhammad James' video where he's talking about uh, Ramadan in Damaj, Yemen. I'll also put a link to that in the description as well. And um, Jazakallah Khair, is there anything else that you'd like to mention? Um, I'll give you the last word. I mean, well, inshallah, this, this, is a, this is a start, you know. I want the people to know that, you know, inshallah, this is what we're going to continue doing. Uh, the book on Ramadan is a start. And inshallah, we have other projects that are in the making. Inshallah, we try to come out with a book dealing with the basics of, uh, you know, the sciences of hadith. And uh, also another book that's going to be a compilation of hadiths from Riyadh al-Salaheen for the people to memorize smaller hadiths. I'm not going to talk too much about it now, inshallah, when it comes out, you'll know. And just things like that, inshallah. So, we, you know, we're just going to try to stay busy, you know, just trying to put out as much, you know, put out much benefit as we can, whether it be in book form, video form, audio form, or through articles, inshallah, we continue to make the articles, inshallah, also on Institute. So, and uh, and of course, the courses, you know, so we had the Arabic course, you know, we had like, you know, of course, you're teaching, you have your classes that you're teaching in Arabic, and then, uh, we, inshallah, trying to do the, uh, with the Ajramiya, and the, what we're trying to do in the Telegram group of going over like Tabir and Arab and, you know, all this type of stuff. So, we're just trying to stay busy and keep the, you know, keep the Muslims busy with benefit. You know, so this is, inshallah, this is a start. This is not like, okay, wow, this is it. You know, we did it. Now, this is just the beginning, inshallah. So, inshallah, there'll be more books and more, and, you know, the more experience we get, inshallah, with dawah, teaching and everything, and inshallah, the more beneficial things we get. And also, the more books I get in the library, inshallah, because <laughs> my limited resources of going back to certain books, you know, but inshallah, little by little, inshallah. So here's the book. You can see the logo there. It's Institute Academy. So, you know, Muhammad James, he's also, he's teaching, um, he's teaching Arabic and he has a student of knowledge mentorship program there. And I also have two Arabic books that I have published, Teaching Arabic, Volume 1, Volume 2. I just posted Volume 3. That's currently in the works, but I'm posting lesson by lesson. So, I mean, there's a lot that we're doing to those who really want to learn the religion, want to learn the Arabic language. I mean, there's lots of content we put out there, uh, contrary to those in the comments who say, oh, all Saja talks about is this or that. They're just <laughs> clearly not as concerned with the other things that we're doing, because this is the majority of what we do is we're trying to do these sorts of things. But you can just look at the views and how many people um, really take this sort of content seriously. And we see as well, we see how many people sign up. We see how many people comment. We see in person when we you know, give people certain books and assignments to do. We see who's really serious about seeking knowledge. I mean, the truth is the truth. So, um, you know, for those of you who really do want to take learning your religion seriously, that's what we're, we're here to try to help with that as we also continue to seek knowledge ourselves. So definitely check out Institute Academy. Uh, you can sign up for courses, but, uh, you know, definitely try to get this book because Ramadan is coming and uh, we definitely want to be prepared for it. Beautiful month. And um, check the links in the description. And inshallah, like, our brother Muhammad James said this is just the beginning, inshallah. So until next time, Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.